My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. In the last episode, we spent quite a bit of time getting crew and equipment over to the Kerbin Station here in preparation for a man moon landing. And now we have all the components that we need, though the Kerstock, uh, who is bringing up one of our crew, or actually two crew people that are required for this, um, doesn't have a free docking port, so we need to sort of shuffle some things about to get things ready. And the first step is going to be taking our lander, the Kegel, and undocking it from the station. And it has no RCS or anything, so it's just going to kind of float here. We're going to orient it along the north-south axis so that it can be easily docked with. Then we'll put Val into the uh, Ryan, which is going to be our main vessel for this particular mission. And uh, Val will just take the Karain and dock it with the Kegel to put these two vessels together. This mission is going to require a scientist, and our scientist is going to be Chrissy, who was just brought up in the Curse Dock. And we'll just fly her over to join Val in the Karain. And now with these two vessels undocked, the station now has a couple of free docking ports. So now we can take the Curse Dock that has just arrived here at the end of last episode and bring it over to one of our free docking ports. And you can see that while we're doing all this other stuff, the curse dock has actually drifted away a little bit, but that's not a problem. We can we can get back here. You can see that in the curse dock we have Bob. And Bob's gonna mine the station while our other three Kerbinauts head off to the moon. And then the plan is uh, to actually use Bob and this pretty much this, not pretty much, exactly this same vessel configuration and uh, get him along with a couple of other people over to Minmus and do the same thing and do a Minmus landing. And that kind of brings up why I kind of want to do this mission this way. Some people might be wondering why not just build one big one-off moon mission, you know, an Apollo style mission or something like that, launch it off a curb and go to the moon, come back, land, no, no, no need for all of this uh, staging in space. Well, it's, this is a lot cheaper. I mean, this is now what? Like the, I gotta think about this. Fourth? Fifth? Fourth? Fourth mission, I think, for the Karayan. So I'm, I've been using the same vessel over and over again. I plan on reusing this lander for Minmus, so it's gonna get some mileage. Maybe I'll use it for something else. I don't know. But, uh, you know, this is a nice, cheap way for me to do it. Now you can see sort of that the uh, Karayan is kind of in our way off to the right oh shoot oh no oh, i just hit z instead of x oh crap i gotta correct for this now uh, okay let's see well first of all we got to get ourselves back going in the right direction and now it looks like Karain is right in our path towards our docking port. Well, that was well done. It looked before like I was just going to slip by the Karain and get to the docking port. Now the Karain is directly in our path. Okay, well, I can see that the um, retrograde indicator on the nav ball is already going to the right. So I think I'm just going to help it along a little bit and we'll pass around this time to the right side of the Karain. There we go. Now our docking port is coming into view. Yeah, I think I can arrest the component of my velocity going this way. So uh, let's push that retrograde icon back towards the target. So I'm heading more or less towards the docking port. There we go. That's looking like I'm going to be clearing the Karayan. So we can just time warp our way past the Karayan and get on with our docking. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of an adventure there. A little bit of, well, to be honest, it's such a small vessel. Not that much fuel wasted compared to the kind of fuel that I need to push the Karayan around. But we did get Bob back to the docking port. And with, uh, with the curse dock now docked, it was time to get this mission on the road. Well, actually, our first official job of this mission is going to be a little bit more mundane. Uh, I haven't had a mystery goo or a materials bay into space for quite a bit of time, so uh, I'm collecting just a little bit 
of science, really not very much. So Chrissy's going to go out there and collect it and then reset this equipment. And it's only two or three science, but I mean, it's there. Might as well go get it. Uh, and we'll do, make sure to do the same thing when we get into high space around Kerbin. Um, but then it's time to, for us to set up our maneuver. Now, going out to the moon has become entirely routine by this point in the game, though there is something this time that makes this one a little bit different than what I've done in the past, and that is I do want to land in a very specific location because I have a mission to do some EVAs and some surface samples at this waypoint here. And the waypoint is a fair bit below the moon's equator, so that means I need to do this mid-course correction burn so that the inclination of my incoming trajectory is high enough so that my resulting orbit will be um, over the location that I want to land at. I mean, I could do the inclination change, you know, in the moon's sphere of influence, but this is most certainly the cheaper way to do it, to do it out here in the middle of nowhere. And I'm just doing this by eyeball. And I'm realizing just right now, I didn't realize it at the time, I wish I did, but I'm pretty sure I could have used the Waypoint Manager mod to give me the longitude and the latitude of that waypoint. And specifically, the latitude is what I would have needed because the latitude gives you the inclination that you need. If you're 20 degrees, let's say, below the equator, then that means you need to have an inclination of at least 20 degrees in your orbit in order to land there. Of course, you probably want to have an inclination a little bit more than that. Um, so, you know, kind of noticing that right now. I wish I noticed it at the time. But either way, I, I did this by eyeball. It worked out okay. And uh, now all that was left to do is to perform that burn and get myself out there. So here we are about a minute away from our burn. And as luck would have it, Kerbin Station is pretty close to being in the path that I need to burn into, so I'm just used a little bit of RCS to try and push me to the south, you know, which is down on the screen. I always sort of say down when I really should be saying south. Down is towards the planet that you're orbiting. Yeah, let's give ourselves a little bit of thrust here. This isn't really performing the burn. This is just to sort of move myself forward and make sure that I'm going to clear the station by a fair bit, but it certainly looks like that's not going to be a problem. So let's take a look here. Uh, i got 58 seconds to uh, for the burn time, the estimated burn time, so we'll split that in half. That's 29 seconds, and I always like to start a few seconds before the halfway point because I always end up reducing throttle towards the end and, you know, to finish off my burn. I don't go full throttle and then cut it. Okay, so let's punch it. Burn away. Say goodbye to Kerbin Station, ladies. But we will be back. Oh, a few days from now. This should be a three, four day mission, I would suspect. Anyway, why don't we cut to the tail end of this burn? Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting a little bit of a wobble here. Let's cut the throttle. Uh, yeah, that can, uh, I did a bit of a correction and got a little bit of a wobble. I need to get that back onto the maneuver node. It's still wobbling quite a bit. That can happen with docking ports, though, when you have vessels connected through docking ports. But I think the real problem here is, I think I still have the docking port selected as my control point. Yeah, let's control from the, uh, capsule. Ah, uh, suddenly that's better. Yeah, the docking ports are pretty flimsy, so I was controlling from the docking port, and if you get you get a bit of a wobble, so uh, be aware of that when you're when you're pushing around vessels that are docked together like that. If you get a bit of a wobble, make sure it's not the docking port that you have selected. And sometimes, depending upon the size of your vessels and the strength of your docking ports, that wobble uh, actually can become quite the nuisance. But here, these vessels aren't that big, really, by KSP standards, so uh, it wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll throttle up and we'll finish off the last few meters per second of this burn. There we go. Let's turn that off. And it's still going to be about an hour before I get to that correction burn that I need to do. And I think that gives me just enough time to move on and do something else. And here we have Svetlana in the Otter 1. And I do apologize for it being nighttime. Um, I wanted to see if I could squeak this mission in before 
I had to perform that maneuver uh, with the Korion, and I launched during the day, but I'm flying towards the east, and I ended up flying into the night side of Kerbin, and my destination is the Badlands. Um, that is the one biome that I have yet to get to in uh, on Kerbin's surface. And what I've done is I've used the Waypoint Manager to set myself up a waypoint near where I think the Badlands are. I was just guesstimating. I didn't look at a biome map or anything like that. Um, and I'm, I'm going there just obviously to collect science. There's no mission associated with this. But I also have a secondary objective that has to do with the interstellar mod and the seismic sensor. That is a stock thing, but it does have a few extra functions built into it. But first is... Oh! Oh! Okay, there's my... Uh, there's my alarm saying that I need to go to the Korion. Yeah, I was thinking that might happen, but I'm not that concerned about it because it is a mid-course correction burn, and that's not a particularly time-sensitive burn. I can I can wait a little bit before I have to perform it. If it's if I was performing a capture burn or something like that, uh, I wouldn't have even risk doing a mission like this. And I'm still, let's see, according to Waypoint Manager, about 18 minutes away from my waypoint. So I'm still not 100% sure exactly that I'm in the right place for the waypoint. So the Korion, Korion can wait. And in fact, yeah, no, I, I underestimated the distance to the Badlands. It turned out to be a little bit further than than where that waypoint was. But uh, no matter, we'll we'll cut here to uh, to us performing our landing. And I I scouted out what I hope is a relatively flat spot, though it is a little bit tough to tell at nighttime. I hate nighttime landings. Okay, we got about 50 meters to the surface. Coming down really slowly because I am very unsure of my terrain here. I'm worried it's just suddenly coming up ahead of me, which I think it is. Oh, it, it's getting lumpier. I'll just put her down. There we go. Okay, let's break. Break. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come back. Whew. Gotta be calmer on the braking there. <laughs> that was close. Okay. We are under control, and as you can see, got a plethora of science to collect. Yeah, it's it's. I've never been here, so this is all the various science things that I've yet to unlock, including this new functionality that's added by the Interstellar mod, but I gotta first, before I deal with any of this, get out to the Karain and get that uh, correction burn out of the way. As the uh, maneuver node had already gone by, I had to reset it up again, and it is a little bit more expensive this second time because I'm not quite at the ideal spot, but the amount of extra is pretty negligible, especially compared to the rest of the burns that you have to do in a mission like this. So, uh, this isn't so bad. And again, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my inclination so that uh, the resulting trajectory will take me over that waypoint that you see there to the west. Is that west? No, it's east side of the moon from our perspective. And I'm going to just finish this off just kind of by eyeball here. I've selected the periapsis because I don't want the periapsis to drift below 10 kilometers because that would be a little bit scary as far as the orbit, the resulting orbit goes. But you know, not only is the inclination starting to look pretty good, the position of the waypoint looks really good. I mean, I'm only about an hour and a half or so away from entering into the moon's sphere of influence. The moon rotates very slowly. So the waypoint looks like it's going to be in a really nice position once I perform my capture. But anyway, with that accomplished, it's time to get back to Svetlana and collect us some science. So we're gonna collect science the normal way that you've seen oh so many times before. And again, there's quite a lot here because I've never been in the Badlands before. And Svetlana's gonna get out. She's gonna collect science from the various instruments, insert them into the cockpit. But there's still one more thing I can do, and that has to do with the seismic sensor and, again, the interstellar mod. But before we can do it, I need to get a few other pieces into place first. So we're leaving Svetlana exactly where she is, and this is Stella in another Otter 1. 
taking off from the Kerbal Space Center, and her destination is going, she's going to set her course due north, because where she's going is to the North Pole. And I think now I'm going to begin to explain what exactly is going on. You see, with the Interstellar mod, the uh, seismic sensor, what you can do is you can set up a recording. And then with the recording, you can record seismic information from an impact. So what you need to do is you need to start the recording and then you need an impactor, which I'll get to in just a little bit. And then once the impact is recorded, you will collect science. Now the science depends upon uh, uh, your position relative to Kerbin and relative towards other seismic sensors. The further apart, well not so much the further apart, the actual ideal situation is is to have three seismic sensors all 90 degrees to each other. So the Badlands is about 90 degrees or so to the east of the Kerbal Space Center. Actually, it's quite a bit, a little bit more than that. It's more like, uh, it's like a third of the way around the planet, but it's close enough. I wanted to go to the Badlands to collect the science, so the Badlands seemed like a good place. And then the North Pole, of course, is 90 degrees north of the Kerbal Space Center because the Kerbal Space Center is on the equator. So that's why we're going to the North Pole. And all I'm doing is watching my latitude that's being provided to me from Kerbal Engineer, and I'm now a little over 87 degrees latitude, and that's close enough to 90 degrees. I, I'm going to put it down. So uh, the landing here is going to be quite a bit easier than it was in the Badlands. Number one is because the uh, ice fields here, the uh, polar ice caps, are dead flat. And also I have a little bit of light from that sun that's way off there on the horizon. You can look just above the plane there, look at the cloud textures. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like wrapping a... Uh, flat texture around the globe to get uh, strange things happening at the poles. So you can see how the clouds are kind of whacked right above the pole there, but that's okay. So we'll, we'll put this thing down and, and of course we'll collect some science. I haven't spent a lot of time on the ice cap, so there is some science here to collect. Um, but the main thing I want to take a look at is this seismic sensor, which we're going to right click on and select record seismic data and that gives us the message that the surface will be monitored for impact events. So we click OK and then we're going to pop out over to Svetlana and we're going to do the exact same thing selecting her seismic sensor and starting uh, another seismic recording and then we got one more that we need and this one is the easiest one of all it's just going to be right at the Kerbal Space Center so we're going to use the seismic buggy and we're going to start another recording there, right on the runway. We don't have to move anywhere at all. And now all we need is an impactor. And here it is. It's just the uh, ascent stage from the last Kerstock 5 mission. And all I've done is disabled the parachute. So this thing is not going to recover. Uh, instead, it's going to impact with the ground. And it does have to hit the ground, not the water. So it does take a little bit of planning to make sure that you do hit a uh, hard surface if it splashes into the water then that doesn't count um, but I've shown you how even this thing though that it doesn't have any probe body or any control on it I've shown you how in the past I control the approximate position where it comes down so it wasn't too tough to uh, get it to hit the surface and so we're coming in close to the ground now I'm apologizing again for it being at night I have so much of this video happening at night so sorry about that but uh, oh there we go Ooh, a bounce! Nice! And then we have a message here that says an impact recorded. A science report can now be accessed from one of your accelerometers deployed on this body. So we're going to jump over to the science buggy where our scientist Luya, who gets a little bit of a science bonus, is going to collect that report. Okay, so let's see here. Collect impact data. Let's do that. And that's going to be 122.5 science! Not bad. And again, it's that's the cumulative data from all three of those accelerometers. So we'll recover Luya, and then we'll go out to Svetlana, who's now, it's daytime now for Svetlana, so she got to watch the sunrise, lucky her while she waited, and recovering her netted another 41.9 science, and then recovering Stala from the North Pole. And by the way, I didn't, I wasn't going to fly any of these people back because they don't have enough fuel to get them back, so they're just flat out being recovered. I'm just going to eat that recovery cost. 
and Stella got me another 15.6 science, giving me a total of 255 science. Not a bad haul for that little mission, and in fact, that's going to allow me to unlock another science node. But before I get to any of that, the uh, Corian is now in the moon's sphere of influence. I've got to perform this circularization burn. Now, before I perform my capture, I do want to take a look at my trajectory using the ScanSat map. Uh, now that I'm in the Moon's Sphere of Influence, I have this map available, and you can see my trajectory there in blue. And actually, looking at this, this is making me feel pretty good. Now, each square on this map is about 30 degrees. And you can see the waypoint there in sort of the left half of the map. Uh, that's where my landing spot is. That's where I want to land. And you can see that it is a little less than 30 degrees below the equator. But the top part of my trajectory is just about 30 degrees above the equator, which actually is my inclination, by the way. My inclination must be about 30 degrees. But this is just about perfect. I can circularize uh, with this, and I should have my map just about perf or my orbit just about perfect to land at that waypoint. Moreover, the waypoint looks like it's going to be at the lowest part of my orbit, which is exactly where I want it to be, in order for me to land there. So uh, this looks is looking pretty good at this point. So all I need to do now is perform that particular capture and as I got into space near the moon, uh, Science Alert let me know that I have some mystery goo and some materials based science to collect. There's, there's not a lot here because uh, I've already been here way back with the Kropalo 1. We came, we did a flyby and collected all this stuff, but there's a little bit here. We might as well get it. And Chrissy, of course, once we perform the uh, capture, She'll go out there and collect all that and reset the equipment, but uh, the capture, oh my gosh, you've seen this before, so this was pretty routine. And then once we got the capture out of the way, it was time to take a look at our map and see how things worked out. All right, well, holy jeez. Uh, I would love to take all the credit of this, but uh, it probably couldn't have worked out any better than this. You can see the waypoint is just about at the blue part of my orbit. And the map is rotating towards the east as the moon rotates, so very shortly that waypoint is going to be right directly underneath the Corian's orbit here, and then we're going to drop our lander and get on down there. But you know, I think that's going to have to be for the start of the next episode. Yeah, sorry about that, but thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>